Hello ladies and uh, gentlemen, today we're back in War Thunder looking at another replay. This was sent in by Little Roma. Now Little Roma did send me a replay which was the first I actually showed on the channel of the uh, Sherman Firefly. And now it seems he's upgraded to the Centurion at Mark 1. He's on Kursk and he hasn't unlocked Sabo yet, which is why you see him using the solid shot rounds. If you don't know a lot about the Centurion Mark 1, well, uh, it is equipped with the 76mm or 17 pounder gun, it has access to two solid shots and the Sabo round. It's basically a pretty good tank actually at 5.7, you don't really need the Sabo rounds unless you get uh, up tier to 6.7 where it's kind of key against stuff like the Tiger 2H. But one of the key things about the Centurion Mark 1 which puts it, at least in my opinion, higher than stuff like the Comet and the Challenger is the fact that it has okay frontal armor, but it has that reverse gear. One of the biggest issues that I have personally with the stuff like the Sherman Firefly, the Comet, the Challenger, even uh, other tanks which are around that BR, such as the FV4202 at 6.3, uh, the Charioteer, they don't go backwards. Like, they, they go backwards at about half a kilometer per hour. Whereas the Centurion Mark I in itself is actually able to go backwards at a hell of a tick. Now, you may notice that Little Roma here does not actually have all of the upgrades on his tank. If you want to know the specific upgrades that he has on his tank, he has parts, both shots, and the horizontal drive unlocked. That's it. So no FPE, no crew replenishment, no Sabo, no uh, smoke grenade, and no smoke shell and uh, none of the engine upgrades or anything like that. So this thing is nearly stock, with only really parts uh, setting him about. So it's, this replay does show that you can do well in a tank which is not fully upgraded. I would always recommend going into a realistic battle fully upgraded, even if it means you have to play a ton of arcade matches. I think that's a good idea, because if you do go into a battle when you're not fully upgraded, you are always at a disadvantage. It's one of the big issues I have with uh, jet combat, where if you come up against a jet which actually has uh, basically fully upgraded compared to your stock jets, well, it's going to be a hell of a battle for you. And as we can see on Kursk, Little Roma could be really benefiting from having the Sabo rounds. The good thing about the Sabo rounds is not just the fact that you get some really good penetration, it's the fact that you also get wonderful muzzle velocity and accuracy. But at least he's able to hit this Tiger, hit him in the barrel, basically knocking him out of action, and now just pumping rounds into him, hitting the engine, hitting the transmission, making sure he can't move, and hopefully trying to set up that killing blow. And there it is, straight through the ammo, making him blow up. Whoever said that solid shot doesn't blow up ammo, well, here's your example of it doing that. <laughs> simple, simple as really. But he's still pushing forward uh, to Kursk, uh, basically the center of the map, trying to fight around the central point, which is probably the one which is mostly contested on Kursk. The other two are definitely a bit more dodgy to fight over, and that was a wonderful shot. Absolutely beautiful shot from that range, there's no way I would have hit that first time. And then again, I suppose he did have the Tiger as kind of a marker of where to shoot, but still a fantastic shot. Now he's looking towards A in the center of the map, because obviously it's being captured. After taking out some of the tanks on the flank, which were able to capture the domination zone over there, it is time to push towards the town. Even though the Centurion doesn't have a great armor, it has good enough armor to be able to at least bounce some shots. One of the interesting things about the Comet is sometimes it kind of soaks shots in the front of it, and the Centurion is basically the same. You look at the gun mantlet and the uh, outer front uh, turret, you're looking at 155 millimeters, which may not sound like a lot, but sometimes it's just able to completely bounce a ton of rounds. Uh, for no real apparent reason. For the Comet, uh, the, sh the shells basically get stuck in parts of the uh, in parts of the turret where they ricochet between uh, you know parts that are modelled in. On the, on the Centurion, it just seems to be able to do it. Maybe it's the same deal. So he's a <coughs> sorry about that. I'm still struggling with the cold. Uh, so he's able to knock out a Panther who is in a very odd position, to be honest, running past 
him and running past all of the tanks which are in front of him. And nobody's really made it to the center of the map. It seems like people have been having a picnic on all of those guys who were to the right of Little Roma. But it is time to move into the town, some close ranged combat, and if we run into anything which has a large caliber gun such as a Tiger II or even a Sturry Mill, we may be in for a few issues here. Because even though sometimes the turret bounces, it's still only 155mm. The majority of guys are going to be able to uh, penetrate that. But it seems like Little Rome is in luck. Him being uh, top tier or nearly top tier, he's running into a lot of Tiger uh, H's and also Panthers and the ST that we saw before. Now this Tiger is being a bit harder to kill than the last one. Something which is kind of annoying about the Tiger armor is sometimes it can be uh, it can be a bit bouncy, especially when you aim for that machine gun port. But look where Little Roma is aiming here. He's aiming at the side of the Tiger, basically on the corner. Now you can actually shoot through the tracks of the Tiger with something like solid shots, and by using that you can knock out the driver, the transmission, and maybe if you do it with APHG or APCBC, it actually explodes into the Tiger, killing it. You can see these shots that he's taking here, trying to hit that magical spot. He has to shoot slightly to the right to be able to shoot through it. You don't want to just nail the track in the front, you want to be able to try and hit that wheel instead. But still, with the 17 pounder with solid shot, a Tiger's armor isn't really that much of a big deal. He's penetrated a lot of shots here. The issue is when you actually penetrate and if you actually do a lot of damage. And that is an issue with solid shot. It has been for a long time. And luckily people have worked around it, you know, aiming for gunners a lot of the time, working out what's left in the vehicle and trying to deal with it. And it's even uh, even at 5.7, even though it's still an issue, you can slowly but surely work on a tank like the Tiger. As long as you don't shoot the turret of the Tiger, you've got to keep shooting that flat plate or the little corner as you'll see he's trying to aim for here. And finally, he's able to take out the gunner. It took a lot of shots, but the Tiger was no real threat to him after he'd taken out the majority of his crew. It may have had one shot at him, but that was really about it. So he can push forward now with no real threat. He's already done a wonderful job in the Centurion Mark I. A vehicle that if you haven't tried out or maybe you know you haven't researched it since the latest update or since it's come out, go and do it because it's actually a lot of fun. A lot of people will be put off by looking at the Challenger of 5.7 and I can completely understand it's probably one of the worst tanks in game or at least one of the worst medium tanks. But the Centurion is a wonderful tank, it's really fun to use and a great addition to the British line which gets you ready for playing stuff like the Cent Mark III and the Carnarvon and the Cent Mark X. There's another Tiger, white as hell on the cursed map, either an issue with um, an issue with camouflages there or just wanted to stand out. You know, some people want to kind of uh, flash their balls about the place which is completely fine. But he's able to been push forward, take out two Tigers, and now he's in prime position to make sure that nobody is going to take this point. He's going to be able to just wait, use the houses for cover, capture the point or move forward if he feels like it, and make sure that nobody else can push on him, using that 17 pounder to wonderful use by uh, basically just scouring that ridgeline. I mean, we all know where the ridgeline is on Kursk. Uh, it's uh, in front of him, from this position, if you're looking straight forward, there's a ridge line where if the uh, enemy team comes up it, you will be able to see their turret, or you will be able to see something. There isn't a lot of bushes on that ridge line for a very obvious reason. It would be a great uh, point for where people could just sit and snipe. But basically, when the uh, village wasn't here on Curse, that's all German teams would do all day, because they had the long-range advantage. So we got shot by some Japanese weeaboo, and luckily he was able to get a shot of the transmission, setting him on fire. Not the best shot, probably wanted to aim a bit higher, and then somehow that shot misses. Uh, maybe once again went a little bit low, but he's able to get another shot, setting another fire on this Japanese tank. Pushing forward, and because there's nobody else around, he can just kind of bully this guy if he feels like it taking him out as he goes and there we go the Japanese flames 
of war have started. Now he's tracked. This puts him in a pretty bad position. And the tiger, his gunner, is knocked out. So that looks like a tiger E here. And unfortunately, he is taken out by another tank. Once he's spotted, that track is destroyed. All of the German tanks come over that lip, as I talked about before. And, well, they just batter him to death. An unfortunate end to a wonderful kill streak in the Centurion Mark I. So we're in the Wyvern for a little bit. And the Wyvern is very much an interesting aircraft. It seems to be a favourite for the majority of players when it comes to uh, ground battles because it has so much ordnance and also it's able to take on fighters. It's a pretty good... Uh, it's, a, it's actually a very good ground attacker. Uh, one of the vehicles that a lot of people have been complaining about <laughs> and... Well, you know, it, at least you traded one for one. <laughs> but it... <laughs> It's a vehicle that a lot of people have been complaining about, and I think if they just nerf the Wyvern, then people are just going to use other stuff, such as the, uh, is it the Firefly for the British, which can carry basically the same ordnance. I'll uh, just have a look here. It is the Firefly, yes, the Firefly Mark I and the Mark V. I believe the Mark V can carry 16 rockets. Uh, yeah, it can carry 8 rockets and two 500 pounders or 16 RP3s. So yeah, just remember, if the Wyvern gets nerfed or upped in BR, the Firefly still exists. But anyway, that's basically the end of this game. A wonderful little game on Kursk by Little Roma. 7 kills, 2 assists, 1 base capture in the center, and 2 deaths from the Wyvern and the Centurion Mark I. I'll also throw in the end battle screen that he's given me. If you want to send me a replay, please do. Uh, unfortunately, with the uh, the small update coming in, it's made all of the old replay files invalid. So if you sent me a replay in the last few days when I was busy, unfortunately I might not have recorded it. But the email is in the description if you want to send me some replays. They are all welcome. I do try and record all of them at the time I get them. And if I'm not at home, well, you know, I'll get them recorded later. But a really, really solid game from Little Roma in the Centurion Mark I, showing its characteristics and showing how good it can be even if you don't have that magical saber round. I'll catch you next time.